We are several days into No Nut November, and I have never participated in this No Nut nonsense. We even did a video, I think two years ago now, debunking the testosterone myths, talking about this a lot. However, I still wonder why this is pushed in the media so hard. You know, they never tell us to do anything that is actually good for us. So what makes this different? I mean, one thing that's probably not true is that your fertility is higher in November. That being said, fertility is technically peak uh, from August through September because of summer sun exposure, higher quality food, people are outside, people are exercising. And if you get pregnant in August and the baby is born in the spring summer, the baby gets more vitamin D, the mother gets vitamin D, overall healthier people, which they certainly don't want. But maybe it's just a cover for all of the negative things affecting male fertility. Maybe it's like, oh, well, if you do no nut November, you'll be a new man. Is it because they want men to be horny and spend more money during the holidays? I don't know. We all know the reproductive substance for males is referred to as sperm semen, and men use a lot of their nutritional stores to ensure it is in peak condition relative to your own health. So you have semen, which is the liquid containing water, plasma, mucus, and some nutrients, and then the sperm, which seems to have more of a protein and B vitamin component. So the nutrients in semen are meant to keep the sperm alive and provide energy while they are racing to the egg using fructose as their predominant source. I found it hilarious that some of these studies were referring to the vagina as a harsh environment, <laughs> the harsh environment of the vagina. Yeah, I would imagine those New York City girls have some type of sewage system as their private parts. That being said, males can be just as vile as females. A perfectly healthy male semen, just like a perfectly healthy female, it's not really supposed to smell. And the color of the semen is supposed to be whitish, gray. If it's foul smelling, if it's off colored, that could be an indicator of the person's health status or even something they're putting in their body, whether it's a poor diet or various medications. And I like to break down uh, it into two components. You have the energy and survival of the sperm in the semen and the quality of the sperm, which are both greatly impacted by your overall nutrition. So from two studies, I came to simple conclusions. The first study was the relationship between semen quality and mineral composition of semen in various ram breeds, and it's self-explanatory. They just looked at a bunch of different breeds of sheep, looked at the mineral composition of the semen, and if the minerals were off balance, the sperm count was lower, indicating that the minerals in the animal's diet directly impact their fertility, and the conclusion is mineral balance affects sperm count. The second study was elemental composition of human semen is associated with motility and genomic sperm defects among older men. And they say that we identify differences in elemental concentration between sperm and seminal plasma, and that higher sperm copper, sulfur, and calcium are quantitatively associated with poor semen quality and increased frequencies of genomic sperm defects. Saying that higher is not better, and those specific minerals copper, sulfur, and calcium are in excess on a standard American diet. You know, you're not getting enough zinc to counterbalance the copper, the sulfur and eggs, a lot of foods we eat now, and calcium is way too high, too much dairy, people taking calcium supplements. It's a perfect indicator that just throwing everything at it, taking more is not going to fix your problem. Now, before I go into the rest of this, I'll go over some common myths. So, People say that zinc is a major component of male ejaculate, and although that is true, it's just as important as the other minerals. And it's likely that the average male is so deficient in zinc that many sexual health benefits are seen when it's supplemented. You know, ZMA, zinc, magnesium, I forgot what the A is, super popular supplement. And one example for me was that when I was carnivore, even though I was taking a lot of zinc, my sex drive was low, but I incorporated selenium, copper, different mineral supplements into my diet, my sex drive was very high and back to normal, showing that, yeah, zinc works in the context of a standard American diet, other minerals work in the context of a carnivore diet. The point is, you need to balance the minerals. In regards to the physical composition of semen, the most of the minerals are in the form of citrate, so a citric acid molecule bound to the calcium, the magnesium, the zinc, and they can also be bound to phosphates and proteins, proteins being 
the second most prevalent compound in male ejaculate fluid. As we mentioned earlier, fructose is contained in the semen for the sperm to use it as energy, which got me thinking. Raw tards and vegans must be consuming all of those fruits and fructose because it makes their sperm sweeter and they can suck each other off for more protein. Fucking losers. Speaking of which, since minerals and protein are the main components of semen and sperm, it makes sense that a vegan diet is the absolute worst for male fertility. High amounts of anti-nutrients and vegetables and grains reduce mineral absorption, while the lack of animal protein means inadequate proteins and amino acids for sperm formation. Outside of those main components, uh, we can assume that the diet as a whole will have an impact on sperm, the DNA quality, everything down to the fatty acid ratio in your tissues. Now, before I forget, one thing that I should have said at the beginning was, you know, abstaining from masturbation does not improve your sperm quality. You know, they say that, yeah, it takes two and a half months for your body to produce a mature sperm cell. However, that's misleading because every day your body has the sperm cells that are ready, you know, the ones that started making those two and a half months ago. The question is, how long does it take for your semen, your sperm to be at maximum capacity. My guess is one to two weeks maximum, depending on the individual. Now the rest of these four categories on here are what I would do to basically increase your sperm quality. And I mean, you know, the solution for kind of every single health thing I talk about involves improving the entire lifestyle and diet, but these are more specific. So most people are deficient and imbalanced in certain minerals. So you wanna identify those and supplement them. Trace minerals are usually the bigger culprit like myelobdenum, manganese, selenium, copper. Soil depletion in food is a big issue, so just because you eat high quality organic food doesn't mean you're getting all the minerals you need. For vitamins, people are really, really deficient in the B vitamins, as well as vitamin D, K2, vitamin C, so those are the main ones. Most people do get enough vitamin A, so that's the only one that's not really mentioned here, but you wanna keep a consistent uptake Make sure digestion is good. Things like water kefir, dairy kefir, high quality animal foods are gonna really help you improve your B vitamin status. For energy, that component of, of the sperm and semen quality, I guess you wanna optimize your organ function so you can metabolize your own energy properly before your body starts working on that. Remove the anti-nutrients, of course. Weightlifting and intense and frequent exercise seem like they would be a bad thing for, for the semen and sperm quality. Obviously, getting outside, exercising, grounding, being in touch with nature is good, but intense exercise every day for two or three hours, I think that would uh, do more harm than good uh, for perfect health at least. Antioxidant, and what I mean by that is you need to remove a lot of negatives, and that's probably more important than adding the positives. The toxins in your lifestyle, um, they definitely impact your sperm quality as well as the ability of your body to produce the sperm and the semen. So even if you're taking everything you need and you're doing all this healthy stuff, if you don't remove the negatives, your body isn't going to be able to utilize the positives. And the B vitamins are super, super important for this because not only are they crucial in a component of sperm and semen, B vitamins are also crucial for your antioxidant cycles. Same with vitamin C. Uh, so over here, I just put like a blurb of words of the things that I think most people do to really destroy their fertility. And I guess the word for males would be virility, you know, your, your male fertility. So being carnivore, vegetarian, or vegan are all imbalanced diets, and they will negatively affect your fertility. Driving is typically, you know, you're in a high radiation environment with a bunch of other cars around you. You're breathing in fumes, you know, very bad. That leads us to the Wi-Fi, EMF radiation, and cell phones being close to our reproductive organs, which is why I always wear protective clothing at all times. Not getting enough sun poor sleep, and stress. You know, if you have any of these factors in your lifestyle right now and you're having any issues, you need to remove those immediately. Uh, we have a bunch of things available on organsupplements.com you should really check out. I have so many interesting products, Wi-Fi shielding. I always wear my protective tank top underwear at all times. I sleep in the bed canopies. I try to put the head nets on when I'm traveling. And I will have a full long sleeve shirts and pants hopefully available soon. And then you can go to frank to see all my businesses, all the other stuff, frankiestrangemeat.com, and you can check that stuff out. So, um, I mean, the main message here, although this has kind of been all over the place, is that you need to focus on your fertility 
and your sperm and semen quality as opposed to abstaining from masturbation. The effects you will get from doing those things will far exceed no nut November nonsense. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully you found this helpful. And you know, we've done a lot of videos on pregnancy and female fertility, so I guess it's time to, uh, to touch on this stuff. Uh, so please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, as I said, check out frank to support me further. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow. Thank you.